Now, I'm sure you probably noticed this amazing looking screen on your Play Audio One U, but I bet you don't know all the secret and hidden features of this touchscreen. First of which being, it's a touchscreen. So let's dive in and let's talk about some of the things you likely do not know about the touch panel on the Play Audio One U. So first thing, like I mentioned, is it is a touch panel. So we have these eight capacitive touch buttons. First thing to kind of look at and, and mention here is I can switch from scene A to scene B really easily just simply by pressing that. That takes me to scene A to scene B. Uh, we could go into our audio page here by clicking the audio button. We could go to our MIDI monitor, which we'll dive deeper into here in just a moment by clicking MIDI. And at any point we could exit to get out of this. Now, obviously on the screen, on our main display, we get a couple important uh, pieces of information. One, we can see that we're sending audio. We can see, um, if for me, I can tell that uh, only channels three through 12 are passing audio. It looks like my click and cues channel is not currently running or whatever is routed to one and two, uh, which is great. We also see our MIDI monitor uh, here letting me know we're sending some MIDI to and from Ableton. Uh, in my case, Ableton, which is my DAW. Uh, which is helpful as well too. So we get a lot of just helpful information initially. Now, if I was doing automatic failover and I had set up a test tone, we would also see a shield there, scene would be flashing. But this is kind of what I have initially. So let's do some deep dives into things we can uh, access here. Obviously we talked again uh, previously about the scene control here. So we can go from scene A to scene B directly on the device. Uh, let's dive into audio. So we could click into the audio here. Um, now I can use my main encoder to either select uh, all of my outputs or an individual output here. Let's go to all, okay? So we'll click on all and this loads the line level out for all of our outputs. You can see we're still metering in real time, but then I can say, okay, let's let's you know decrease our volume here. Uh, let's increase our volume. And I'm doing that for every single one of my outputs simultaneously, which is great. Let's say though, for some reason, okay, it looks like three and four are a little hotter than the other ones. Uh, let's say I wanted to dive into this and just knock three down like five dB. So let's do that. Then let's knock four down five dB as well too, okay? So I can go in and really easily make these adjustments and changes. Again, directly on the interface, I don't have to go uh, and use my computer to make this happen, which is great. Uh, now let's say for some reason I wanted to just mute all my outputs really quickly. I could go to my headphone enco encoder here and double tap and that will mute all my outputs. But again, it keeps my headphone output active so that I can monitor that and listen to that, which is great. So that's a great feature. And we can double tap to get out of that. So um, that's a quick look at our audio page. Uh, now let's hit exit to get out of that. We get back to our main screen here. Now let's dive into our MIDI monitor, which this is a really, really helpful utility. So first I can jump into MIDI by uh, tapping on the MIDI uh, encoder there. And then we can change different pages. So we can view MIDI in and out from DAW A, the connection, whatever's connected to DAW A, DAW B, which in our case, we don't have anything connected, uh, RTP, which is our RTP port on the back there, uh, USB, which is our eight host ports uh, that we could have uh, connected, and then our DIN in and out, which is just slightly out of frame, like right there. Uh, just because I'm zoomed in, you can't see that. But what's really great about this is I've got a MIDI controller right here below uh, uh, my PA1U, below this rack, and I can move some faders on this. And what you'll see is you'll start to get a visual display on what is happening here. So this is actually telling me right now that, okay, I am sending MIDI CC information out of doll A, okay? Uh, I see a little fader that, that shows me that it's CC information as opposed to if I press this, you'll see that's sending a MIDI note information, right? I have that little note icon here. So let me go back into Ableton so you can get our playback started again. There we go. Now I could change here. Um, this is really helpful even, let's go into USB one uh, and I can move this again and I can say, okay, this is coming in on host port one, right? And then we're sending MIDI out, uh, out of channel one there. And we can click through and see, this is a really helpful thing just to see where MIDI is getting in and out of and um, just get a quick kind of visual of what's happening. So don't sleep on this. This is a huge feature, particularly when you're trying to troubleshoot MIDI issues uh, and see where your MIDI connection is not working. Or just to make sure that you're receiving and seeing MIDI, I can toggle over, for example, and if I was receiving MIDI from an RTP connection, uh, I could look and go, okay, yeah, channel one, RTP one, okay, great, we're good there. Um, I, I'm, I'm set and ready to go. And I could see this information here for MIDI, which is really great. Again, secret kind of hidden feature uh, on the MIDI side of this that you may not know is if you have a lot of MIDI gear connected, I could double tap this MIDI uh, touch encoder and it's gonna send a MIDI panic signal. And that's super helpful, particularly if I've got a keyboard or something connected and I want to like kill all my MIDI signal at once, uh, which is great. So again, we can hit exit to exit out of there. Let's finish up talking about our main encoder here. A uh, couple different options we have. A short press is gonna show us information about our device. 
serial number, the, the firmware uh, hardware version uh, that we have there, which is great. But then let's say we went into our audio. You probably remember me going in here and changing these outputs. I actually want to go back and set these uh, back to where they are. So let's make that change. Then I want to save this. Oops, I'm going to lock that one in. I want to save this. So instead of a short press, I'm going to do a double tap and that's going to save my settings directly to my interface. No need for me to open my computer to look at Oracle for X series. Uh, and then again, we can press exit to get back to this really helpful info display. So that's a look and a deep dive into the front panel of the Play Audio One U. Tons of features there that I, I bet you probably didn't know existed. That MIDI monitor feature is an insanely helpful feature for me as I'm building connected stage type setups and satellite setups uh, with additional MIDI gear. The ability to adjust and set my audio outputs is huge. And for me, the ability to mute my audio outputs but still monitor through the headphone port is an amazing, amazing feature. If you wanna deep dive deeper into the headphone monitoring stuff, I'll link that video below as well too. But if you have any questions about the Play Audio One U that we didn't address in this video, click the link in the description of this video to head to our support page to see all our tickets there or to contact our support team. But most of all, thanks so much for watching and we hope to see you on the next one. Take care everybody, have a great day.